All right, I'm back. Uh, we're on page 293, and this is where you're gonna get uh, a little more introduced to the concept of a derivative in relation to your calculator, which is amazing. We've actually already looked at this a little bit because when we were learning the limit definition, at some point we went into the calculator and we just like played around a little bit and found limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h um, for a couple of different functions. And if you remember that, that's great. If you don't, maybe go back and check that out. Um, we're gonna do some, what are called numerical derivatives uh, in this video. So let's see. First, we are given the function f of x equals the natural log of x. It is not obvious what the derivative of that might be. But let's use a calculator to find some things. So first, I'm gonna to have to share the calculator with you and show you how to do that. So we have this, uh, I'm gonna do a new document. I'm going to define my function, so f of x is the natural log of x. I don't actually need to do that step, but I usually do it just because, uh, I mean, force of habit. And then usually you use the function for more than one thing. It's usually not just like a one and done situation. So uh, now I need to find the derivative. So I'm going to show you two ways that we can do this. So if you press menu and go to option four, you'll see calculus. And for this menu, you'll see derivative versus derivative at a point. So we want the derivative at a point because it sets everything up for us. So I'm gonna press enter and it asks you the variable. So the variable will be X. The value, it actually doesn't matter what value you put in initially because you can change it. So I'm just gonna say one because that's the first value in the table that we're filling in. And look at this, what derivative do I want? Do I want the first derivative, the second derivative, an nth derivative? So what is an nth derivative? An nth derivative is just like some generic derivative, like the 25th derivative, the 37th derivative, who knows? Um, I do want the first derivative because I don't really know anything about any of the other derivatives yet. Um, so first derivative, I'm gonna press enter and you'll see the template. So now it's asking you, it's gonna find ddx, the derivative with respect to x. That's what ddx means, that's one way to read it. So you can just say ddx of, or you can say, the derivative with respect to x of. The second one makes you sound smarter, uh, but they're both the same, they're equivalent. Now I need to tell it what function, so I'm gonna say f of x. So I want the derivative of f of x, which would, another way of saying that is df dx. The derivative of f with respect to x, df dx at x equals one, and what the calculator will do is it finds the derivative at one. It's gonna give you a warning in this particular, it doesn't always give you a warning. Here it's gonna say domain of the result might be larger than domain of the original. Yes, that's actually true in this case. We'll talk about why in a second. So now if I wanna keep going, so I'm just gonna do the values that are in the table. So the derivative at one was one. The derivative at two is one half. The derivative at three is one third. This is kind of interesting. The derivative at four is one fourth. You could probably guess the derivatives now. One fifth, one sixth. That's really interesting. Uh, let's go back to the notes and fill those in. So it looks like whatever x is, so I'm gonna say this is one, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, and one sixth it kind of looks like the derivative of natural log of x is probably one over x. Um, so let me see what, that's my guess. So I'm gonna fill this in right now. I think if f of x equals the natural log of x, I think f prime of x is one over x. What issues does this have? Well, the domain of the natural log of x is x greater than zero, right? You can't take the natural log of a negative. So if the domain of the original is x greater than zero, it doesn't make sense to have a slope places the original function doesn't exist. So the domain of the derivative should also be x is greater than zero. So I'm gonna put that in. There's a caveat though. So this is where x is greater than zero. It's actually possible for the derivative to have a smaller domain than the original function. There could be points that are in the domain of the original function where the derivative fails to exist. That would mean like, uh, 
if we had, uh, what? I don't know, if the domain of the function is all reals, but then the derivative, when you try to do that limit, just doesn't work at two, then the domain of the derivative would be all reals except two. It's a smaller domain. The domain of the derivative can be at most the same as the derivative of the function. Sorry, I'm using the wrong word. The domain of the derivative can be at most the domain of the original function. Maybe I did say the right thing. I don't really remember. All right, let's see. Write the equation line tangent at x equals three. This, I think of this as a, useful, a useless tangent line because I need to know f of three, which is the natural log of three. I don't know that. So like, how is this tangent line gonna help me out? Uh, but anyway, I do know that f prime of three is one third. So that's weird. So my tangent line is gonna be y minus the natural log of three, useless, equals one third x minus three. So that's my tangent line. Is it a useful tangent line? Like, probably not. Here, let's use it to approximate something. Let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna say that the natural log of 3.1 is approximately the natural log of three plus one third of 3.1 minus three. Mm, I don't know. So let's simplify that. That is plus 1 30th. So it's not a lot bigger. I wasn't expecting it to be though, because if you think about the graph of natural log, also let me, let me explain one thing really quickly while I'm here. Uh, you'll notice that I initially have used this approximately equal to, but then here I use this equals. So what's happening is the natural log of 3.1 is approximately the natural log of three plus one over 30 we find. But this, when I simplify it, is exactly equal. So as you read it, it's like the approximately still applies to the thing on the left of it, but then to the right of it, it's like I'm saying those two things are exactly equal. That's totally fine. Some people don't like that, and so what they'll do is at the end, they'll, they'll finalize their answer and say, therefore, the natural log of 3.1 is approximately the natural log of 3 plus 1 over 30. I don't ordinarily do that. I'm just doing that because some people really don't like that inequality type situation there. Um, so let me, let's see, uh, is this an over or underestimate? All right, what does the natural log of x look like? Here's our, here's our axes and our function is another one you should have memorized. Looks kind of like this. So if our function looks like that, then at x equals three, we could say here, we're gonna go this, this. So the tangent line is above the curve. So I'm going to say tangent line above curve. Therefore, three dots. Therefore, this is an overestimate. You can abbreviate that overest. Okay, so it's definitely an overestimate because the tangent line is above the curve. If you remember, when the tangent line is above the curve, we say that the curve is concave down. So if the tangent line is above, the curve is concave down. If the tangent line is above, you'll get overestimates. It all makes sense. I mean, uh, terminology is terminology. Like, you can't really make sense of that. But once you know the terminology, it all makes sense. And like the notion of an over or underestimate, you really can't get it wrong if you can get the picture right. You got to know the natural log of x. That goes in your mental whatever, your mental Wikipedia that you're, you're keeping up there. All right, I'm gonna stop this video here. I'm gonna come back, finish this page, talk about some more stuff. Uh, looking forward to it. I will see you then.